Thank you. Finding inspiration is not the hardest part of composing music. Musical ideas are all around us, but sifting through them to find something that's going to be appealing not only to yourself, but also to other people is the real challenge. Hi, my name is Jackson Jin. I'm a composer and electronic music producer. And what if I could show you what makes popular music popular? So here's the end result of a well-known piece, Pachelbel's Canon in D. Now, even if you don't know the title of this song, this chord progression is used throughout contemporary music and is heard in weddings, graduations, and throughout our culture. But how exactly did Pachelbel know this would be so appealing? Well, he had commissions, audiences, and audiences that gave him applause as sources of affirmation. But he would also stress the importance of classical music theory, which states that very certain harmonies, chords, and all these types of progressions are crucially important to making appealing music. But if we look on the other side of the world, for example, some cultures don't even use the same 12 semitones per octave, much less the same harmonies or scales. So then what is it that defines music? What if you were born on an island with no society? Then what would music sound like to you? So on this island, we find a coconut. It sounds like this. Pretty basic noise, not inherently musical or special. But let's make it a little bit more special. What if we find two, two sticks? It sounds like this. Now, if I were to play this sound over and over for an hour, how many of you would consider this music? Or better yet, how many of you would just go ahead and kick me off the island? <laughs> Probably the island. <laughs> But we find more sticks, and then now we can change a variable to add more interest, pitch. Now we get something that sounds like this. A lot more interesting. So now what I'm going to do is play this over. Now this is a lot more interesting than the coconut. But what we're going to do is bring the coconut back in. Now what you have is the stable rhythm of the coconut, but a very interesting counterpoint of the sticks on top. And lastly, to bring this to our final step of musicality, imagine that we're in a cave. And now, what you have is the interaction of the sound with the cave and the echo creating something predictable that will always happen, but yet inherently interesting. So by a raise of hands, how many of you would consider that more musical than just the coconut we started out with? <laughs> awesome. It looks like almost everyone. Great. So then, what is it that defines music? Music is fundamentally the balance between predictability and variability. Now, this is important because you need your music to be intriguing. You want it to be interesting, but at the same time, if it's not predictable, if you can't anticipate what's going to happen next, it's too chaotic. So I'll show you what I mean. We take out one of these, and all we have is predictability. A famous modern composer, Philip Glass, is known for using very repetitive music that sounds just like this, very predictable without much variation. So let me play a little bit for you. On and on and on. This piece is an hour and eight minutes long. <laughs> That's crazy. And on the other extreme, let's take out predictability and what do we get? We get complete variability with no anticipation of what's going to happen next. Another modern composer, John Cage, is famous for playing very avant-garde music without much anticipation of what could happen next. And in this particular piece, he uses a feather to stroke an amplified cactus. I'll show you what I mean. It sounds like this. So imagine that for an hour and eight minutes. 
Now, I don't personally enjoy John Cage's cactus experiments, but some people do. Some people are on either end of the spectrum that can like very predictable music or very variable music. <laughs> but for the most of us, we need it to be balanced between predictability and variability. So what's an example of this? Well, actually, Pachelbel's Canon in D is a great example. What we have here is a piece that's balanced very well with each chord sharing at least one note with the chord preceding it, a very steady tempo and chord progression with a very interesting counterpoint on top. What does this all mean? Translation, it's well balanced and it's appealing. So what we're gonna do is see if we can take that out, take out the intentional predictability and variability and see what happens then. So what I've done is cut this up into eight arbitrary slices and with the help of the audience, could I please have a number between one and eight right here? Seven, okay, a different number please. Seven, four. <laughs> between one and eight. <laughs> Seven four two, seven four two three, seven four two three six. We have seven four two three six. Now what I'm going to do is play this Philip Glass style. Over and over. And what we have is something that sounds totally different and honestly pretty bad. So thank you, with the help of the audience, we've just destroyed one of the most appealing pieces of music. <laughs> but that's easy. Anyone can deconstruct music. You just have to take things out until nothing's left. But what if we could transform noise into music using these same principles? So this next sound I have, I can already see by the looks on and groans that this may sound like something more that you uh, try to hit in the morning to shut off rather than music. But what if we change a variable to make this more interesting? So let's change pitch. So instead of this, we change pitch and we get this. A lot more interesting, right? And then next, we're gonna change rhythm and see if we can make this even more musical. We get this. So, how many of you think that last part is more appealing than just the alarm clock itself? <laughs> I would rather wake up to it as well. But what does all this mean? Some people, do have preferences on either end of the spectrum. And our preferences can fall anywhere in between. Some people may like more predictable music, some people might like more variation. However, the majority of us need this fundamental balance of predictability and variability to find music appealing. Every day when we listen to music, we use very strict frameworks like genre, culture, and era to tell us exactly what music is going to be appealing and what instruments and sounds to listen for. But the next time you listen to something that doesn't catch you immediately or isn't appealing at first, don't press skip. Give it a chance. Focus on the balance of predictability and variability. Thank you. <laughs>